Hello guys and welcome back to the second part of the energy tutorial series. In today's episode we're going to be going over creating an energy generator. So let's get started. So the one I'm going to be creating is going to be similar to things you see in most mods like a coal generator and such. Where you put in an item and it generates a certain amount of energy. In the last episode we went over and I demonstrated how the capability system works and how to manipulate your energy storage that we also created in the last episode. So now we are going to actually go on and create a block. Go into your block in it and we are going to create a new block. Public static final block and this is going to be a glowstone generator. So I put glowstone into my generator and it will create some energy. This is equal to a new block glowstone generator and its name is going to be glowstone generator. So we've now declared the block, we're going to create the block class and put it inside of dot blocks. We are going to extend block base, control to do to import that and add the constructor. I'm going to remove the material and creative tab options and declare that material is iron as it's a machine I usually go with iron and put it in my main tab. There's going to be no rotation for this one and you want to try and avoid that anyway as Minecraft are making modifications to that in 1.13. You can go and save the block in it now and the error should go away. There's going to be a lot less functions in here than what you're normally used to as I've managed to shrink it down we don't need a lot of the functions I put in before. So the first one obviously we're going to be opening a GUI so on block activated. If the world is not remote, so exclamation mark world in dot is remote, then the player will open the GUI. Player in dot open GUI main dot instance for the object mod. The mod GUI ID, we're going to open our reference and create another ID and make the ID to three. It has to be different to each of your GUIs. And then reference it here, reference dot GUI glowstone generator. It's in the world, world in, and then pos.getx, pos.gety, and pos.getz, and then return true. Control shift to S to, in, to save reference and glowstone generator so that that error goes away. I was previously using the depreciated iTalented provider, but I've been informed that there's a much more modern way of doing it, which is the has tile entity. You need to ensure that the method is the one with the iBlock state and return that as true. And since it has a tile entity, we have to declare to create a tile entity. So create tile entity, just return a new tile entity glowstone generator. And then finally, the break block function. Leave it there for now, we'll come back to it, but that'll be a little different to before. So create this and put it in the tile entity package. As I said in the previous episode, it will extend tile entity and it will always implement itickable. Ensure that it's net.minecraft.util.itickable. And then I have also made it so that the actual storage is a bit different to the way we did our furnace. We are going to be using a different, another capability called iItemHandler. So we need to declare that item handler, public item stack handler call it handler and that is going to be equal to a new item stack handler and you can put the size in here of but we only have one slot now we can go back into glowstone generator and finish this break block function we need to declare our tile entity so tile entity glowstone generator called tile entity is equal to tile entity glowstone generator in brackets world in dot get tile entity for this position then what we do is we're going to world in dot spawn entity a new entity item world in pos dot get it, pos dot get y pos dot get z and then the actual slot tile entity dot handler dot get stack in slot slot zero and that's what we're going to drop. Control shift to import entity item 
and that will make it so that your item drops on the floor. You can now save the block glowstone generator and there should be no errors. Back in the tile entity, we are also going to create our energy storage. Private custom energy storage called storage is equal to a new custom energy storage and then obviously you can, as I said previously, you can do different constructors. I'm just gonna do the single capacity of 100,000. Once again, we need a custom name, private string called custom name. And then if you are doing the way I do it, where we're putting in an item, you may also want to cook time. So public int cook time. I was having some issues actually manipulating it using the way I showed in the previous episode. So I decided to create my own energy variable. So public int energy equals storage dot get energy stored. This makes it easier to actually manipulate the energy. The error is because we do not have the update function. So we'll create that and we'll come back to it later. You can go into the energy tutorial and take the capability functions from previously. as it does have the energy capability, but it also has the item handle capability, so we need to create another one. If capability is equal to capability item handler dot item handler capability, return t this dot handler. And we can copy the energy version here. If it's the item handler capability, we can also return true. As I mentioned in the previous episode, this relies heavily on a write to and read from MBT. So that's what we're going to be doing now. Firstly, write to MBT. We do super.write to MBT. We then save the everything in the inventory, so all the slots. Compound.set tag, call it inventory, and then the actual value here is going to be this.handler dot serialize mbt so it converts all our slots into an mbt value we then need to set two integers compound dot set integer the cook time and that is the cook time and then also our energy value compound dot set integer i call it gui energy as this energy value's only purpose is to make it work with the gui and then i just um, this dot energy. Then we need the custom name, so compound dot set string name, and then I use get display name dot to string, and then finally this dot storage dot write to MBT compound and return compound. So this write to MBT will write our energy capacity, max receive, and max extract values. Then now in the read from MBT. We have to do all of that in inverse. So firstly, super.read from MBT. Then we deserialize the MBT, this.handler.deserialize MBT, compound, dot get compound tag inventory. Then we set the cook time, this.cook time, be equal to compound.get integer. So the previous cook time that was the same when we left the game, and the same for the energy value. This dot energy is compound dot get integer GUI energy. Then this dot custom name equals compound dot get string name. And finally, um, this dot storage dot read from MBT. So when we leave the game, it will remember all our slots, remember how far through it was um, cooking or generating power, remember how much energy it has, remember its name and also remember his capacity, max receive and max extract. And then when it reads, it will come back and get all those values again. For the get display name, I found you could, it can be a lot more simple. You can just return the new text component translation, container.glowstonegenerator. That will look in our lang file for that value, and then we can set that to the, the words glowstone generator. We also need a couple of values public int get energy stored will just return the energy value public int get max energy stored will return 
this dot storage dot get max energy stored. We also are going to create our own get and set fields. Public in get field int id. We use a switch of the id case zero return this dot energy case one return this dot cook time and then default return zero. Then the set field public void set field int id int value switch by the id again case zero this dot energy equals value case one this dot cook time equals value and then finally is usable by player public boolean is usable by player you can actually if you have uh, the sintering furnace if you've already done the sintering furnace tutorial you can come and copy it from here if you haven't then the github link is in the description you copy it off there or you can just write it off the screen it's basically just checking how far away the player is. So that is all the simple functions done. Now the actual update function where we manipulate how much energy we have and our slots and things like that. This one's very simple. A couple of them that we will be doing in the future episodes might be a bit more complicated. If handler dot get stacking slot zero dot is empty and is item fuel handler dot get stacking slot zero. We'll come back and create that is item fuel um, function in a minute. Then increase the cook time. Once the cook time reaches maximum, whatever you want to set our value to, if cook time equals, and then this value here is the maximum cook time. For me, I've put it as 25, but you can test out certain values and find out what works for you. Then energy plus equals, which means that the energy value will equal itself plus the value we put here, which is get fuel value for handler dot get stack and slot zero. Then the handler itself, that slot, whatever fuel is in there, we're going to shrink it by one. So it will consume one fuel. And then we reset the cook time back to zero. So we now need to create this um, is item fuel function. We return the get fuel value function for the stack is greater than zero. If it's not zero, if it's zero, then it's not a fuel val item. And we'll create the get fuel value item stack. Here you just use lots of if functions and say if stack dot get item is equal to the fuel you want to use. So items dot glowstone dust for me. And then return the amount of energy you want it to put in. I'm going to put return 1000 and then else so any of the items that isn't the items you want return zero and they won't work as fuel and that is the tile entity here done so if the fuel slot is not empty and in that fuel slot is an item that has a fuel value then we will start to consume it um, to create energy once the cook time has been reached, we will it will create the energy and it will be consumed. For the purpose of time, I'm just going to copy in my container and GUI here, as they are very simple. And I'll go through and demonstrate them to you now here. What is different is we're using something called slot item handler. So a slot that works with the item handler capability. So you need to actually declare this variable here, I item handler handler equals tile entity dot gate capability the item handler capability obviously there is a default um, inventory slots here and this is my fuel slot for detecting and send changes we have the energy and the cook time variables you'll have seen these in previous things basically it goes through and makes sure that these values are updated and that the GUI and the container keep having the up-to-date variables and then down here in transfer stack and slot this is the function that makes sure that you can shift click it just goes through and checks things you can copy this from the link in the description now the GUI we have the resource location so it's just the textures GUI glowstone generator.png we have two variables for the tile entity and the player and it supers off of the container it also will write the tile entity name the player display name, which is the word inventory. 
and then here this um, draws the amount of energy currently stored and so it just converts the integer into a string and then we'll draw the numbers of how much energy is stored. Then down here we have this energy stored scaled function. This is very similar to the cook progress scaled as it gets the um, current storage and the maximum of storage and then divides them by each other and multiplies them by how big the actual uh, GUI element is. Ours is 75 tall and then we are drawing our textured modal rect which is obviously a texture at this location in the GUI. And this 76 minus K here is saying that it will draw uh, the GUI going upwards. I'll show you the GUI here. It's very simple. We have the slot, we have an arrow that um, cook time will go across, and then we have this energy bar that fills up, along with the inventory down here. This can be available in the link in the description as well, you can download this, or you can create your own. Obviously if you create your own, you've got to manipulate these X and Y values to make these slots align. The final thing we need to do is go into our GUI handler and declare the GUI. So it's going to be very similar to these ones, so you can literally just copy it and modify the numbers and names. If reference dot GUI glowstone generator and then container glowstone generator and tile entity glowstone generator. And then down here it's going to be exactly the same except for the GUI. So change this word from container to GUI. If you haven't watched any other videos, this GUI handle it needs to get registered inside of the init function, the main init function. I have this thing called init registries and then you use a network registry to register a GUI handler. The other thing we have is the tile entity handler. So we also need to register the tile entity for this. So game registry dot register tile entity, tile entity um, glowstone generator dot class and a new resource location reference dot mod id plus colon and then followed by the name glowstone generator. Now that those are registered, it should now work in the game. So we're gonna run the game now. Obviously we have this untextured um, item or block here. We place it down and right click on it. It opens up our GUI. It says glowstone generator here. This is in the lang file. Um, I haven't actually shown you this on camera. Um, go into your source and resources, your lang file and you need to declare container.glowstonegenerator equals glowstone generator. We have the one slot in the middle here and the inventory and this energy bar. If we get some glowstone, it will start to um, add energy. And as you can see, the energy bar starts to increase uh, proportionally to how much energy is in there. I'll just cut the video here and I'll show you it full up. Also to demonstrate the MBTs, as you can see here, it keeps going up. I'll leave the game and then rejoin the game, right click on it and it's still smelting, it was about halfway through there and this value still remains the same. So we have our first energy system, very very simple. In the next episode I'm going to be showing you how to make a machine that runs on energy. So if you can't wait for that, subscribe to my channel so you can be notified when that video happens. If you like this video leave a like down below. Thanks for watching, my name's been Harry, and goodbye.